Well, with all of that good panel production, it's time to catch up making some battens. Another thing to add to the list of lasts, and I've got this decent piece here. This is gonna be a bit of a tricky bit. I'm just trying to use materials that means as close to no maintenance. I need these doors to be able to open 180 degrees. So I've machined up these pieces for different areas. Well, with all of that good panel production, it's time to catch up making some battens. I'm going through all of the offcuts of the rosewood that I've got, and I've got this decent piece here, which I'll be able to make use of for the lazarette. This is gonna be a bit of a tricky bit. At this end, I'm going to leave it wider than where it will be for the rest of the length. The reason for that is, this is right below the starboard aft hatch. So when you open that, when you wanna go down below, you'll be able to have this as a nice landing step or ledge. And apart from a couple of little bits, I really don't have much useful scrap. So I'll need to get another board down from Mistress, rip that up, get it thicknessed, epoxy coated, and then I can add them with the panels to be fitted. Well, another thing to add to the list of lasts. This is the last board of the original rosewood stock that I got. I need to use a little bit of this in order to get everything made up as I've listed below. That'll probably leave about three meters of stock here, which is not bad because there's not really that much more I need to do apart from trim and fiddles. If I need more, I can get it from the good joiner who's done some machining for me here before. I have a feeling it won't be quite enough. But yeah, that's not a bad guess really, I think.
And the next thing to mention are these hinges. These are cabinet hinges. Now I wanted to have 316 stainless steel pretty much for all of the metal installation inside of Mistress. I just was not able to get stainless steel hinges or 316 stainless steel hinges that would be the right sort of size for the cabinet doors that I'm fitting in the galley. There'll also be similar sized doors in the heads and above in the galley area, possibly elsewhere. I'm just trying to use materials that means as close to no maintenance over time. So I've elected to go for these brass hinges. They are high quality ones. The point being with this, in these current times in which we are in, getting a hold of things in the world just is not as easy as it used to be. Sometimes in these current times, things that you're after can take months. So plan ahead. Of course, another thing I need to do in order to hang these doors is to put hinges on them. And that's where I ran into another little issue to add to the list. I'd actually initially purchased butt hinges thinking that they would do the job, but then I came across the problem of I need these doors to be able to open 180 degrees or thereabouts because these are mounted on a front panel for those cabinets. A butt hinge will not allow them to open more than about 100 degrees. I couldn't find any locally, so I ordered some from overseas, apparently the UK, and that was a total failure. Eventually, I was able to find somebody within Australia, albeit in Adelaide, who would actually make them. And so these hinges are what's called double cranked concealed hinges, which allow the pivot point, instead of being on the inside edge of the door, it's on the outside of the edge, which then will allow the door to open beyond that sort of 90, 100 degrees. They did take quite some time to get here. And to be honest, they're not exactly the quality that I was hoping for. They're probably what I'd call about a C grade in quality, but they are what I want and need. And I ordered a bunch of them 
to cover all the doors that I'm expecting to put into Mistress so I can use these to do what I need to ahead. So I've machined up these pieces for different areas. This piece here is for the engine box. That's going to be a bit of a stiffening beam. And then these three pieces here are trim pieces for that lazarette bulkhead. As you can see, I've machined a trench out of the bottom of those, which will obviously sit over the top of that lazarette bulkhead. But what I want to do, I want to do something with these edges to sort of fancy them up a bit. So I'm going to put somewhat of a bullnose profile on the edges of all of those three pieces. And then with this piece for the engine box, I'm just going to round that over because that's pretty much not going to be seen. However, like everything, you don't want sharp corners. This is the next batch of good rosewood for Mistress. It's going to be doing a lot of different things and it probably doesn't look like a lot to you guys, but it is a lot when you consider all of those four edges and the ends on everything. I need to now get all of that sanded. First of all, with the orbital sander, then edging with the trimmer to take off all the sharp corners and then hand sanding all of that before I can epoxy coat it. So I'm not going to put you through all of that. I'll try that clicking thing. I'm not sure how it works. Let's see. Hang on a minute. That didn't seem to work. There we go. That was quick. All sanded, dressed and ready for epoxy coating. And there you have it, everybody. The stage is set for a significant large progression of now installing much of what is on the to-do and post-it notes lists. The next episode's gonna be exciting. And of course, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't. Click the bell so you get the notifications. Check out my website. And as I always say, leave a comment because I like reading what you have to say.